Welcome to this T2U topic video that looks at sustainable food production. This is part of Paper 2, Unit C, The Challenge of Resource Management. Many people are concerned that current strategies to increase food supply are not sustainable in the long term, as they require intensive inputs and damage the environment, and that we should be moving towards sustainable food production methods that maintain food supplies for the future without harming land or water resources, and also use minimal energy inputs. Sustainable food production is also more appropriate for communities in LICs and NEEs who cannot afford large-scale agricultural practices. Sustainable food production has three key components. Social sustainability means a good quality food supply that is reliable and increases food security. The food is also safer to eat as it doesn't use chemicals, and the variety of food means that people have access to a nutritional diet which improves their health. Economically, it should provide sustainable livelihoods for those involved in farming, whether they are in low-income countries, newly emerging economies or high-income countries, and these should help local economies thrive. And finally, the environmental impact should be minimal, such as not using chemicals or destroying habitats and reducing greenhouse gas emissions to help in the fight against climate change. There are lots of different strategies being used to increase food supply sustainably. Let's start off with organic farming. Organic farming is producing food locally without the use of chemicals, which is much better for the environment and tastes better. However, because production and labour costs are higher than other forms of farming, organic produce is more expensive to buy. The reason for this is because it has lower yields per hectare, but this also means that less food is produced to feed the population. We have a separate video that looks at organic farming in detail in this playlist. Our second sustainable strategy is permaculture. Permaculture is food production which follows the patterns and features of natural ecosystems to minimise the impact on the natural environment. It includes harvesting rainwater, composting waste and redesigning gardens to include a wide variety of plants and trees which provide a range of wildlife habitats. Permaculture practices include crop rotation, keeping animals like sheep and pigs and managing woodland. It also uses natural predators like ladybirds instead of chemical pesticides and natural fertilisers such as manure to add nutrients to the soil. Our third example of sustainable food production is urban farming. Urban farming is the cultivation, processing and distribution of food in and around settlements, sometimes using allotments but also using some more interesting ideas such as vertical farming in old office spaces or even making use of old underground tunnels. These farms help with urban greening by increasing the green space in towns and cities, absorbing pollutants to improve air quality, increasing infiltration to reduce the risk of flooding and increasing urban wildlife habitats by attracting wildlife such as birds and butterflies. Urban farming is community-based and offers people the opportunity to work together on joint food-based projects. In high-income countries, permaculture is more of a social movement to get people to engage more with food production and are generally very small scale. Whereas in low-income countries, they tend to be a much more important aspect of food supply, providing jobs and, incre and increasing access to a varied diet. These three strategies lead nicely into seasonal food. This is part of the previous three. So it's part of organic farming, permaculture and urban farming. And it's how we used to eat when we bought food from local farms or markets and could only buy whatever fruit and vegetables were in season. Whereas now, because of better storage and faster transport around the world, it is possible to eat every type of food throughout the year. Eating seasonal produce bought locally is much more sustainable as it reduces food miles and therefore reduces our carbon footprint. It usually tastes better too. We're going to finish off this video by talking about sustainable meat and fish. 
Many people will argue that to be truly sustainable, we need to not be eating meat at all due to the environmental costs involved, particularly when we think about livestock that is kept inside and reared intensively with grain. However, grazing livestock outdoors so they are pasture fed is a much more sustainable way of producing meat. And sheep and cattle can actually be used to maintain the landscape. Free range farming where animals are able to spend most of their time outdoors is seen as a much better way of farming, which is also kinder to the animals involved. In the UK, we use a freedom food label so customers can see that the meat they are buying has been reared in this way. One of the big issues with fishing is the overfishing of certain species so they cannot recover. This leads to a huge decline in population. This has happened with cod stocks in the Atlantic, which eventually did start to recover when limits were placed upon how many cod could be caught and other types of fish were promoted instead. Sustainable fishing uses either fishing grounds where the population of a species being fished can be maintained forever and that damage is not being done to fishing waters or the food web. Or it uses fish farms, like the one on the screen, where many fish are farmed sustainably, including shellfish such as mussels and freshwater fish such as trout. However, there are issues with fish farming in that it can introduce diseases to populations of wild fish where the water can become contaminated with the chemicals and drug treatments used in this intensive type of farm system. Sustainable fishing also considers the methods used to catch fish. Using a pole and line or diving for shellfish is much more sustainable than using large nets as other species such as dolphins and turtles can get caught in the holes. These species are then returned dead to the sea. It's also more sustainable than dredging the seabed or bottom trawling which causes widespread damage to the seabed ecosystem. That concludes this Tutor to You topic video focusing on sustainable food production. Thank you for watching.